Hi, welcome to Advaita and in this video we will be looking at Hinduism methodically. So we will understand what Hinduism is, different schools of philosophies within the Hinduism and we will understand the definition of what Sanatana Dharma is. So if you are interested in learning about Hinduism or about the philosophies of Hinduism, make sure to watch this video till the end to get an overview of what Hinduism is. Now before I start, I will make it clear that this is based on my research and my understanding. So if I have misinterpreted anything or misrepresented anything, you can leave a comment below. And also we need to note that Hinduism and the Sanatana Dharma are very broad and very deep. So whatever we cover about it is only on the surface. But apart from these, there are hundreds of philosophies, hundreds of uh, teachers who were in the past but whose teachings have not come to us right now because of various reasons. So now with that, let's start today's video. Basically, at first we need to understand the Sanatana Dharma as an open culture which gave a lot of emphasis on seeking and realizing. So we had an open and flexible structure which allowed for individual thinking. We were free thinkers who engaged in intellectual debates and reasoning to come to different conclusions and because of this different philosophies and different schools of thought emerged. And basically there are 11 Indian philosophies in total. And to understand them, we need to categorize them into two parts. One is orthodox Indian philosophies, another one is heterodox Indian philosophies. So within orthodox philosophies comes six philosophies and within heterodox philosophy comes another five philosophies. Now the orthodox schools of philosophy accept Vedic teachings and accept Vedas as a basis or foundation. And the heterodox schools of philosophies do not accept Vedas to be true or do not accept Vedas as a revelation. So this is the fundamental difference between the orthodox and the heterodox categories. Now within the orthodox schools of philosophies, which we will be focusing on, there are six philosophies and Hinduism, how it is right now, mostly comes from the orthodox schools of philosophies. And here there are six philosophies. First is Sankhya, second is Yoga, third Nyaya, fourth Vaisheshika, fifth Purva Mimamsa and sixth Vedanta. So these six are the Indian philosophies and these six philosophies accept Vedas as the ultimate knowledge. Now the five philosophies in the heterodox category are Jainism, Buddhism, Charvakas, Agnana and Ajivika. So these are the five philosophies who do not accept Vedas as the foundation or the ultimate knowledge and they propound their own teaching. Now within the orthodox category, let us look at each philosophy, what they tell us and who it was founded by. Now the Sankhya philosophy was postulated by Kapila Muni. And Swami Vivekananda has called Kapila Muni the first philosopher of the world. And Samkhya basically looks at this universe in two distinct aspects. One is Purusha, which is consciousness, and second is Prakruti, which is matter, mind, body, this physical reality, everything comes under Prakruti. And Samkhya basically tells us that both these realities are true and both these realities exist parallelly. So this is the basic teaching of Sankhya and Sankhya says that we need to realize ourselves as the consciousness and we need to come out of suffering. Then comes Yoga and Patanjali Maharshi is the famous sage of the Yoga philosophy. And within Yoga there is Ashtanga Yoga, there is Hatha Yoga and different teachings and different methods. But Yoga literally means union, which is union of body, mind and consciousness. And yoga basically uses different techniques of mind control, meditation, breathing techniques, different pranayamas in order for us to attain samadhi, which is said to be the ultimate oneness with the consciousness. Now within Patanjali Yoga, there is Yama, Niyama, Asana, Pranayama, Pratyahara, Dharana, Dhyana and Samadhi. Yama is self-control, Niyama is basically observation of rules, Asanas are postures, pranayama is breath control, pratyahara is choosing an object, dharana is fixing the mind on that object, dhyana is concentrating on the chosen object and samadhi is merging the mind and the object. So this is the fundamental teaching of the yoga school of philosophy. 
Then comes Nyaya. Nyaya is based on logic and it was founded by looking at the Nyaya Sutras. And Gautama was the sage who is associated with the Nyaya school of philosophy. Nyaya basically propounds a scientific and rational approach to philosophy. It is based on logic and it basically tells us that there are six ways in which we can attain knowledge. One is through perception, second is through inference, third is through comparison or analogy, fourth is through postulation or derivation, fifth is through negative proof and sixth is through testimony. So this is the basic teaching of the Nyaya philosophy. Now note here that I am not going very deep into each of these philosophies because each of these philosophies are very deep and they are a separate topic on their own. I am just giving an overview of them so that we get an understanding of what Hinduism actually is. Then comes the Vaisheshika philosophy. Vaisheshika is very similar and very closely related to Nyaya philosophy but they only accept two pramanas which means they accept only two ways in which we can attain knowledge. One is through direct perception and second is through inference. This is what the Vaisheshika philosophy says and Sage Kanada was the founder of the Vaisheshika philosophy. And then comes Purva Mimamsa and uh, Sage Jamini is said to be the founder or the main sage associated with the Purva Mimamsa. Purva Mimamsa basically focuses on the ritualistic aspects of the Vedas. It propounds the importance of pujas, of yagnas, of various rituals that are elaborated in the Vedas and this entire philosophy of Purva Mimamsa is based on the Karma Kanda or the ritualistic portions of the Vedas. And then comes Vedanta which is based on the knowledge portion of the Vedas and it is based on the work of Veda Vyasa and it focuses on Jnana or knowledge and within Vedanta again there are different schools of philosophies which are Dvaita, Shuddha Dvaita, Vishishta Dvaita, Achinta Veda Veda and Advaita. Now we have discussed the six schools of philosophies within orthodox Hinduism. Now let us look at these elements which are common within each of these six philosophies. These elements are samsara and dukkha which is suffering and karma which is the concept of cause and effect and dharma which is morality and then reincarnation which is punarjanma and then moksha which is liberation or enlightenment. Now it is also important to note here that Advaita is especially unique because it is the only philosophy which propounds non-dualism. The concept of Tattvamasi, Aham Brahmasmi and the basic teaching that this entire existence is one truth is propounded by Advaita alone. All other schools of philosophies including Dvaita, Vishishta Dvaita and other schools of philosophies like Nyaya, Vaisheshika, Sankhya, Yoga etc. do not come to the conclusion that the universe and this existence is non-dual. Advaita Vedanta is the only philosophy which tells us that this existence is non-dual and this existence is consciousness alone. Now with that let's look at the heterodox category and different philosophies of the heterodox category. Within the heterodox uh, school of philosophy first comes the Charvakas. Now Charvakas are pure atheists. They reject supernaturalism, they reject rituals, they reject Vedas as foundation or knowledge. They believe in direct perception. Whatever we can perceive directly, that is the ultimate or absolute truth. That is what Chavaka philosophy propounds. Then comes Jainism. Jainism was revived by Mahavira, the 24th Tirthankara. Then comes Buddhism. Buddhism again has different schools within itself, we will not go into that in this video. But basically Buddhism is based on the teachings of Gautama Buddha who was called as the Shakya Muni by Hindus. So he was a Hindu prince who was born to a Hindu king and later we all know the story of how he left his kingdom and how he became Buddha. And the next philosophy is Ajivikas. So Ajivikas they deny karma and they believe that there is no free will. They basically used to tell that everything is based on fate and there is no such thing called a free will. So they are also pure atheists. And the last school of philosophy is Agyana. And most of their teaching is lost and some of the mentions of their teachings is within Buddhism and Jainism as uh, you know the philosophers of Ajivika philosophy used to debate with Buddhists and Jains at that time. 
so most of their original teachings is lost but it is said that they did not have any original philosophy of their own but they used logic and debates to break down different philosophies and different religions now we establish that none of these five philosophies which are heterodox philosophies except vedas as the source of knowledge we should also note here that though buddhist jainas ajivikas and agyanas did not accept vedas as the foundational knowledge and they rejected different forms of idol worship our culture was so open and so flexible that it accommodated every school of philosophy and every school of thought so they were not outcasted from the society instead they were accepted they were debated with different intellectual debates and different discussions used to happen from different teachers of different philosophies and many people used to gather and listen to these debates and through this the knowledge of everyone in society used to grow so this is a stark contrast to different other religions in different other parts of the world in many religions and in many cultures in ancient times when someone rejected a certain religion or a certain book or a certain idol they were outcasted from the society and in many cases they were killed or lynched but in hinduism this was not the case we used to debate we used to discuss and we used to understand things better and i think that is what this society needs and i think that kind of culture is what this world needs right now with that let's end today's video i hope you found this valuable make sure to subscribe to our youtube channel for more content like this and i'll see you on the next video